Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty DLC and 2.0 update are pretty good image correction tools for the game. 2.0 update fills all the shortcomings of the base game, while Phantom Liberty nicely concludes the story, depending on the ending you got. A couple of months ago, I cleaned up all the side quests and gigs in the game and made a video about it. I asked the question whether the game was ready for a DLC due to the amount of bugs I faced during that playthrough. Well, 2.0 update answers that question. If it wasn't for all the changes and fixes made with it, I think Phantom Liberty would be on a very shaky foundation and would fail to deliver what it did. Thankfully, the foundations are now strong and I enjoyed Phantom Liberty very much, aside from a couple of things we're gonna get to. So, rather than talking about Phantom Liberty in general, I will try to focus my thoughts on four goods and three bad things about this DLC. Spoiler free for the most part, I hope. Let's start with the goods. The revamp with 2.0 update is great. Many bug fixes, the police system update, the vehicle combat and transmog system are all great, but what really made me happy was the new skill system and the new cyberware system. The skill trees we got with 2.0 update feel like a way more organized and thought out system that gives identity to the builds. Brute with a hammer, dexterous katana or sneaky hacker. Wait, so Overwatch PvE did release but in a different game. Drugs aside, I do really like this change because it brings build system closer to other RPG games and it actually makes me want to try different builds rather than just stick with a shotgun throughout the entire game. Second one is Dogtown. Even with all the issues Cyberpunk had after the release, there was one thing that was done perfectly from the get-go, the environment design. Night City with its districts, the NPCs, the lights, and the dystopian corporate feel is just amazing. It's so good that removing fast travel points would not upset me. And this is also reflected on Dogtown, but in a bit different way. Dogtown does not feel just like another district on the existing map, but more like an isolated location. It is a rundown place left behind operating with its own rules governed by a warlord and influenced by different factions. I think the devs did a pretty good job immersing you in this part of the world and kind of pulling you out of Night City. Next up, story. It's a classic government slash secret agent story topped off with political games of Dogtown with a couple of twists and turns that keep you on your toes and question characters around you. The game wants you to ask yourself who can I trust, who is telling the truth and who's just trying to use me as a tool in their game. Since it is a DLC, it's of course not gonna go too much in depth, but it is delivered concisely and shortly, offering a couple of endings. Simp ending is what I got, it is what it is. Lastly, the characters. This one is not gonna be about Reed, Alex, Sombird, or the President, which I also think are pretty nicely polished characters with interesting background stories. No, this one is about character disguise system, the behavioral imprint gadget that allows you to impersonate other characters. I think this system breaks the monotony and tediousness of eavesdropping surveillance sneaky missions, especially when the characters you're trying to fool start testing you. So you have to use the information about the impersonated character to pass these checks. Now on to the bads, or more like questionable ones. First one, Kurt Hansen turned out to be a throwaway character. Now I'm not sure if this is due to the decisions I made in the game, or if there was some universe where Hansen plays a huge role in this story, but in the universe I got, this character was just another side character from some gig rather than a ruler of a district. A couple of interactions with the character made me believe it's all gonna culminate in some epic boss fight, but instead I learned he was dead during a loading screen. Second one, bugs are still there. Of course, the bugs I faced during the DLC are nowhere near the ones everyone is familiar with from the game's launch, but they still exist. Most of them are minor glitches here and there. However, I did also face a bigger issue, game crashing. This happened a couple of times and weirdly enough, only when autosave or regular save happened. After some googling, turns out cross-platform save was the reason behind this. The last one is Relic System, which I think is underused. I understand that this is DLC, it's not gonna deliver major in-depth systems that were not there in the base game, but this one I just feel is a missed opportunity. First, the Relic System skills you get are not that many, and for the most part they are melee focused. Seems to be the theme with these recent changes. This shortcoming is not actually what bothers me the most, there are plenty of skills to play with, but this second one hits a bit harder. I think it'd be nice if the Relic skills were thematic to the Relic itself. Imagine skills that are maybe more on the intelligence slash hacking side or somehow coupled with this concept of constructs sitting in your head. Perhaps a skill that has something to do with mind control hack, utilizes Johnny himself or the most obvious choice, at least after you finish the game, some Blackwell skills. This way, relic skills would feel way more special rather than just another attribute type skill. All in all, the game has come a long way. It is in a pretty good state and it feels like the actual release and not early access we got three years ago. Can't wait for Cyberpunk 2040.